Greetings, greetings, fellow grade 10s. It's Mr. Tlajoyo again. Welcome to Back to Basics. What we are looking at now, we are still looking at our functions, right? So we are examining this function of ours, which is basically our parabola function, right? Now, let's see in terms of what it, uh, what these questions require us to do. They say now the equation of the function is given by g of x, which is equals to a over x plus q passes through the point three uh, and what three and two and has a range where y is the element of negative infinity up until one and then also from one up until positive infinity, right? So what is it that you are going to do now here? So now, uh, firstly here, this, uh, as soon as they say where y passes this, so basically this one, they say y start from negative infinity till one, and the other one start from one uh, also uh, till infinity. So basically this, like this bracket that is like this, it means the one is not included. And also these like, uh, this, you know, curve like bracket also means that this other one is not included, right? So which means if the one is not included in this particular range and is also not included in that particular range, which means basically one here, it is your intercept, right? So which means basically your value of your Q here, it is represented by one. Right. So which means already what we are having, y is given by, uh, remember they said it's a over x, then this is going to be same as plus one because the one here, this particular graph is not passing it. Right. And now they want us to find out what is going to be the equation of g. So we are going to substitute now this particular point, which is three and two. Now, when you do that, what is going to be your two? Your two is going to be this. Uh, your y and this is going to be a over your 3 plus 1. And then now we are going to solve for a. When you solve for a, you are going to obviously take this one, this side first, right? When you take this one, this side, it's going to be 2 subtract 1, which is going to be 1 is equals to a over 3. Then you cross multiply, which means the value of your a is going to be given by 3. Oh, it's okay. And if your value of your a is given by 3, which means this equation basically is given by what? G of x which is equals to what? Three over your X, right? This is going to be plus one. I'm going to get. So basically that is going to be the equation of G of X that we are going to find. Now they say equation H, uh, the X is of symmetry of G has a what? A positive gradient. Now, how do we find the, uh, you know, how do we find the axis of symmetry, right? This is simple. You know, the easier way of finding the axis of symmetry is everything except the what? Except the A. So, which means basically if you are looking for the axis of symmetry, you're just going to take these, right? Uh, you're going to just take these two. Let me just write that very nice. Uh, this, you're just going to take these two and those are going to just give you your axis of symmetry, right? So which means your equation of your axis of symmetry is going to be y is equals to x, which is your p, plus your one, which is your q. That's all. How to get? Basically, that is going to be your, uh, you know, your equation of your axis of symmetry, right? Hopefully that makes sense to you. And now, uh, let's see, what is the next question? The next question is they want us to now to do what? To draw this graph. Uh, now showing what? Uh, showing the graph of G, the graph of H, uh, right? Clearly indicating the asymptotes and also the intercept of that. Now let's start here. Uh, now this graph, uh, let me just make up my space here so that we can draw this particular graph. Now, but before we do that, now, uh, we need to find out one thing. You need to at least have your x-intercept or your y-intercept before you can draw any of this particular graph. And already here, remember the equation of your graph here, if you can look at this one, your equation of your graph is given by what? Y is equals to, y is equals to 3 over x plus what plus 1. And from here, if let's say you want to find out your x-intercept. Let's say, let's say we're starting to find out your x-intercept, right? For x-intercept, you let y to be equal to zero, right? So we are saying for x-intercept, you let your y be equal to zero. So this is going to be zero is equals to three over x 
plus one. Then you take the one on this side is going to be negative one is equals to uh, uh, three over your x. Then when you multiply by x, this is same as negative x uh, is equals to three. So therefore your x is going to be same as what? As your three. So which means your graph is going to intersect at what? Uh, at this is negative three. So this is going to be a negative three, right? So your y is going to intersect at what? At zero or rather at three and zero, right? Negative three and zero. It's going to intersect at negative three and zero. Now for the y, for y, you are going to say y is equals to now uh, three over what? Zero plus one. And what is the answer that you are going to find here? The answer that you're going to find is going to be same as what? It's going to be undefined or it's going to be your, your zero, right? Basically, it's going to be undefined. The answer that you're going to find in here. And as soon as you are getting an answer that is undefined, which means uh, we, are getting to, we are getting an answer that is undefined, which means there is no y uh, intercept here. So since there is no y intercept, then that is going to be what you're going to do. So now let's just, you know, write our thing here so that we can, uh, you know, you know, calculate from this one so that we can just write uh, and draw our graph. What am I saying? Look, this is going to be uh, this Cartesian plane of ours. Hopefully you can see them. Right, this is going to be the Cartesian plane. And now what is it that we have from the Cartesian plane? Now, I said from this particular graph, the graph is, was y is equals to x, o, I mean, three over x plus one. The one here represents the asymptote, right? So which means basically your y is given by one. So the asymptote of y is going to be here, right? This is going to be somewhere here where your y is one, right? So that is going to be your asymptote. And what is the next thing that you are having? They say uh, also, you we calculated that the first intercept, it was negative three and zero, and that's all, which means your graph is going to intercept here at negative three. Let's say this is our negative three, right? And which means another asymptote of y is basically here at zero, because this particular graph is not to, is not going to intersect this particular line, right? So which means this graph, when you're plotting it, is going to, you know, move this way like this. Ah, uh, let me just try and draw it nicer. Then this graph is going to be, ah, uh, it's going to move something like this. Ah, uh, then this is going to be like that. And this is going to be like that. And remember, your graph doesn't cross your asymptote. Similarly, the other piece, you are now going to draw the reflection, which is going to be in here. Oh, to get then that is going to be the first one. The second one is going to be your what now? It is going to be your uh, axis of symmetry. And your axis of symmetry, it was given by y. Your h of x, remember the one of x of symmetry was given by x plus one. So basically, the x plus one, it, it only intercept here at when x is equal to one and also when your y is equal to negative one. Are we to get? Uh, if you are not sure, look. If you say uh, your y is equal to, let's say you let your x to be equal to zero, this is going to be zero plus one. Can you see that? Uh, this is going to, firstly, your y is going to be positive one, which is this one. Similarly, if you want the x, you are going to say, look, zero is equal to x plus one. Therefore, your x is going to be given by negative one, right? So that's why we are saying this is going to intersect here. Uh, then this is going to be this particular graph of ours. Let's draw it nicer. Uh, it's going to intersect here. Uh, and somewhere here. <laughs> so, that, so this is going to be same as what? This is same as negative one. And this is going to be positive one. Now, basically, this is the graph of H of X. And this is the graph of G of X, right? This one graph of g of x so basically that is what you are going to do now let's look at the last question now uh the last question is write down the equation of the asymptote uh the graph of f if uh f of x is given by that now let's start here now they are saying uh uh firstly your new graph of f of x is going to be cause to what it's going to be cause to negative uh g of x plus five, which means basically this graph is reflected. What was the graph of G of X? Let's start here. The graph of G of X was given by what? It was given by uh, your three, it was given by three over what? Over X plus one, 
right? This is going to be plus five and this is going to be negative, right? So which means now when you are uh, solving this, this is now going to be, you are going to multiply by negative uh, in this bracket. So this is going to be negative three over X. The one multiplied by the negative is going to be negative one. And then this is going to be plus five, which means the new graph of F of X now is going to be given by what? It's going to be given by negative three over uh, X then this is going to be a uh, plus, now what, plus four. And now what is going to be the asymptote for Y? Remember here, it's same as for X, it's same as plus zero here, right? So which means for X is actually going to be zero. And then for Y, the asymptote is going to be same as four. Oh, it's again. So basically, this is how we are going to now find out the asymptote of this particular graph. Hopefully, this makes sense to you and you understand what was required of you. Thank you very much.